Massive accident in Carberry, Manitoba after collision between bus and truck. Two Inu families prepared to exhume the bodies of babies that they had sent away for treatment in 1970 and who came back to them in coffins. Canada to spearhead a new security mission in Haiti and some 500 people have died after boats sink off the coast of Greece. Good morning. It's Friday, June 16th. I'm Nora and here are your headlines. First, it should be the biggest news in Canada today, it probably will be, but it's important enough to get highlighted on a podcast that has promised to talk to you about undercovered news. A bus has collided with a transport truck on the Trans-Canada Highway at Carberry, Manitoba. 15 people are dead and 10 have been hospitalized. A bus had left a senior center in Dauphin for a trip to the casino at Carberry. The truck had a Day and Ross logo on its trailer. The company was not responding to journalists' calls, reports Alana Smith from The Globe and Mail. With just 8,000 people living in Dauphin, the community was on edge yesterday waiting to hear who had passed away and who had survived, as so many people know each other there. Drivers for both vehicles survived. The intersection is the meeting of the North-South Highway 5 and the East-West Trans-Canada. There is a double-lane thoroughfare that the mayor of Dauphin, David Boziak, said can be, quote, difficult at times to get off the rural roadway and across the double-lane thoroughfare. There is a stop sign and a yield sign at the intersection. Many people have been injured or have died in traffic accidents over the past years at this intersection. Next, this story deals with details about genocide and Indigenous children who died after being sent for care in a hospital in 1970 and who never came home. Turn down the volume for about two minutes if you prefer to skip this. A new law in Quebec that intends to help Indigenous families find out what happened to their children after they were sent to hospitals for treatment and never came home is being used. Two Innu infants will be exhumed who died of whooping cough in a Baycomo hospital in 1970. Indigenous parents or other family members were prevented from traveling with sick children in the 1960s and 1970s if they had been sent out of community to hospital, and many of them died. Radio-Canada's Enquête featured their stories in 2015. In 2021, the CAC passed a law that created support teams to help these families access government documents that might tell them what happened to their children, reports CBC's Steve Rukavina. The government also covers all costs for the families, including if a family decides to exhume a child's body. The two babies that are currently in the process of being exhumed were born in Pessamit on Quebec's North Shore. They were infants when they were sent to Baie One was four months old and the other was only a few weeks old. Horrifyingly, when the babies died, the families were sent to their coffins, but they were forbidden from opening them. They were told that it was for quote-unquote health reasons. This has, of course, haunted the two families, as there's always been a doubt about whether or not their child was actually in the coffin. One of the mothers says that she's lived racked with guilt her whole life that she let them take her baby. Sadness, guilt, and shame. The other mother died just before this law was passed. Her daughter has taken on this work and said, quote, My mother died, but she lives through me. I feel her emotions, her pain, and it hurts me greatly. It's for her that I'm taking these steps. Both babies will be brought home, closer to family, and laid to rest. Minister of Indigenous Affairs Ian Lafreniere has said that the government's team is looking at up to 150 more similar cases. Next, Canada will be coordinating efforts to, quote, restore Haiti's embattled police force, unquote, reports Dylan Robertson from the Canadian Press. It's being called a, quote, joint security coordination cell. Canada will be leading this from the Dominican Republic. Prime Minister Ariel Henry, who was not elected, called for military intervention last fall to, quote, clear out the gangs and allow for humanitarian aid. Robertson notes that Canada's preferred approach to Haiti right now is through sanctions. Melanie Jolie has been encouraging other countries to also impose sanctions on certain Haitians, something that Robertson reports that European and Caribbean nations have, quote unquote, largely avoided. Canada will give Haiti's police forces $13 million. Robertson reports that they will be working out of the Dominican Republic and, quote unquote, eventually out of Port-au-Prince. 
He also adds that Global Affairs Canada warns Canadians to, quote, avoid all travel, unquote, because of kidnappings. But Al Jazeera reported that Jolie, quote, did not specify why Canada would in part work out of the Dominican Republic, unquote. Al Jazeera notes that the Dominican Republic has deported tens of thousands of Haitians who had fled there from Haiti. UNICEF released a report yesterday saying that three million children in Haiti rely on UN food relief. Haiti has been dealing with some very difficult situations. Uh, Recent earthquake, flooding and fears of a cholera epidemic are making things in Haiti even less stable. And finally, as many as 500 people are feared dead off the coast of southern Greece. Since 2014, an estimated 27,000 people trying to reach Europe have died or disappeared on the Mediterranean. Crossing by way of Greece is dangerous, and many people have changed their routes to instead land in Italy. There have been 55,160 people who've come to Europe so far in 2023, more than double than came in 2022, reports The Guardian. They're mostly coming from Côte d'Ivoire, Egypt, Guinea, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. At least 441 people have drowned this year crossing the central Mediterranean from January into March alone. That is the deadliest three-month period since 2017. But since 600 more people have died or disappeared crossing in April or May, many sinkings aren't recorded, so the number is likely much higher. Some countries, like Hungary and Poland, have refused to take any refugees, while other countries have been fighting over who should take how many. The European Union has just passed an asylum pact that will charge €20,000 a head for any member country who refuses to take refugees. Those are your headlines for Friday, June 16th. I'm Nora, and it's Friday, so I hope you have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you on the other side.